Okay, I want to do one more example of principal components analysis. Some place that I use this often is with survey data. So uh, I've talked about this in my class before, but if, if you're watching this just on YouTube, um, survey data is something we'll use to measure what we call latent constructs. So something like customer satisfaction. There is no perfect measure for customer satisfaction. It's latent or unmeasurable. So you could try to sort of get at customer satisfaction by measuring something like repeat purchases or customer loyalty. Uh, would you know, ask them, would you refer this to a product to a friend or family member or something like this? But there is no one perfect way to measure it. So what we do is we often use these survey questions with a Likert type scale from one to five or one to seven that says, uh, you know, something to the effect of state your level of satisfaction or state your level of agreement with the following statement or indicate your level of agreement with the following statement. And it'll say something like, I am very satisfied with this product. Uh, one, disagree strongly, seven, strongly agree. And then we'll ask him, okay, another question, something like, uh, I would use this product again, or the features of this product uh, operated the way I would expect them to. And we ask all these different questions that are very similar or related. They each measure very slightly different things. And that's how we try to get at this underlying construct of customer satisfaction. So the question is, how can we then use customer satisfaction in a predictive model? Do you use each survey question individually? No, we want to reduce uh, that, those number of dimensions and, sort, and combine uh, customer satisfaction into one measure. Now, some people might just average those together, but that's a bad way of doing it. What we'd prefer is to uh, use a technique that will plot all of these questions or statements that indicate customer satisfaction uh, or, uh, together in a scatter plot and basically do like we've done before with two variables where we draw a straight line through it and try to uh, use that to indicate exactly how much each one of these dimensions or questions represents this underlying satisfaction construct and then calculate an overall factor score for customer satisfaction. That's what we're going to do right now. So I have a, a survey. I'll show you what it is here. I want to start a new experiment, a blank experiment, and let's grab the data I just uploaded. All right. So um, at the beginning of this course, if you're taking this as one of my students, you might remember a survey that we did for your first assignment where I had you uh, use Tableau to come up with some insights on some data. I think it was the, the Twitter data about various tweets and come up with some insights about the people who were tweeting about a certain product. Anyway, I asked survey questions about several variables. Besides, um, I asked you for feedback on uh, on various, um, oh, it looks like my data didn't upload properly here. Let me fix this real quick. Okay, that's better. So in this data set, I have a, my first five columns are insights that the students gained from um, analyzing this data in Tableau and viewing it in some several charts. But let me show you what I have here. So AGR one through five is a latent measure of a person's uh, agreeableness. This is a personality trait. So how agreeable they are on a scale of one to five. This is, comes from the uh, big five personality trait model, which is definitely the, the our, currently our best model of individual personality, much better than the Myers-Briggs test. Um, then I have a few other variables, conscientiousness, extroversion, intellect, neuroticism. And then I get into these um, cultural variables, which looks like I didn't sort this. Oh, I forgot to sort that column. So this is uh, the cultural variables come from a guy named uh, Hofstede. Let me pull this up. He is the world uh, renowned expert on uh, dimensions of national cultures. So he divides uh, our culture into these six variables power distance, um, how much we express, uh, a degree, how much we see a distance in power between us and our superiors, individualism versus collectivism, masculinity versus femininity, uncertainty avoidance, long term orientation, um, indulgence versus restraint. So I've measured each of these variables using their standard scale, which has been refined and tested. And I have each of those variables measured here. Now, I have, and so in other words, I have a whole bunch of questions now measuring individualism versus, or indulgence versus restraint. And in, oh, that's what this one is. This one's individualism versus collectivism. Anyway, I want to reduce these dimensions down to a more reasonable set. So 
if these questions truly are measuring underlying constructs, then I should have one for agreeableness, two, well, there's, there's five personality traits, so let's get through those. There's the end of my big five, so there's five of those. Six for masculinity, seven for individualism, eight, nine, here's the rest of that masculinity versus femininity, 10 for power distance, uncertainty avoidance, 11. Then I have several other control variables. Their age, gender, years of work experience, country they're originally from, and state they call their home when they're here. These are students that are currently in the United States, so uh, what state do they call their home? Anyway, uh, so with 11 of those variables, what I want to do is let's start by pulling in a select columns to give me... Uh, just those, I, I don't want those, um, these insights or time spent taking the survey. I just want all of these right here. I even want these control variables or demographics down here. Let's pull all those in, okay. Next, let's do our um, principal, there it is, components analysis. And I'm gonna tell this, all right, we want to include um, there should be 11 dimensions total. Launch column selector. Uh, oh, I don't have to do it this way. Begin with all columns. There we go. And exclude. Well, these won't be in there because I've, I've, this happens sometimes. I've done a select columns, but I haven't processed that pill. And so it's still showing these right here. Ignore those because those won't exist once I run this. What I want to do is come down here and remove each of these demographics control variables. I don't want those included in those uh, survey constructs because these are observed measurable attributes that are a bit different. So now ideally what will happen when I run this is it'll, it'll keep these five as they are and then reduce those. I had something like, let's see, 11 times four or five. I had something like 50 other questions. And I want to reduce those 50 questions down to the 11 underlying constructs they represent, which include agreeableness, extroversion, conscientiousness, intellect, uh, you know, all, all those different personality traits and cultural dimensions. So let's go ahead and run this. One of the things I wish they'd add, um, which they haven't yet, uh, Microsoft that is, is the ability to see how each of the um, measures or whatever you want to call it, they call it features or, or fields or independent variables, which of them loaded and how much on each of the 11 uh, newly generated factors. So let me visualize this and show you what I mean. So it kept these ones as they are, but then it created 11 columns. And I, they what basically how it works is they take each one of those questions that I included in the principal components analysis and they, uh, that analysis says, here's how much, um, well, in each of these new columns, that question loads or contributes a certain amount to each column. One of these columns represents the actual construct that that survey measure measures. So like one of these columns should be, for example, agreeableness. And all of five of those agreeableness questions should load highest on this column and weakest on the rest, or sorry, yeah, and weakest on the rest of them. But unfortunately, Microsoft doesn't give us that analysis yet to see did these 11 turn out the way we thought they would. Because sometimes you'll measure two variables like uh, customer satisfaction and customer loyalty. And say you ask five questions that measure each of those for a total of 10 questions. Well, the problem is, is those two constructs, loyalty and satisfaction, are very highly related to each other. It could be that you made a survey question to measure satisfaction that actually loads better with loyalty. And so you want to know how good were my actual survey questions and how well do they do at measuring the underlying factor I was looking for. We don't get that here uh, with um, Azure Machine Learning Studio, at least not yet. So uh, hopefully they add that at some point in the future and I'll update this video and change it. But for now, I now have those 11 measures, but it's just simply represented by these column one through 11. And without that extra detail, I can't tell you exactly what column 11 is supposed to represent. But what I can do is say, now let's do a predictive model. Let's split the data. And um, 
take our resulting fields that came out of that. Let's do a 70-30 split. Randomized seed, sure, why not? And then I'm going to get a train model. Pull this in. Uh, what should we predict? Let's take a look and, and decide here. Let's see if we can predict uh, age based on their uh, personality and culture, or should we, uh, well, let's do, now let's do country based on their, based on personality and culture. All right, so there's my dependent variable country in my data was a text field. So I'm gonna have to use some type of classification based model rather than a regression. So let's take a look at those and pick one. Um, to keep things simple, since we haven't yet gotten into all of our different options here for various models, let's stick with a uh, logistic regression. So I think thus far, if, you're, if you've been following my videos in order, we've done uh, linear regression. Logistic regress regression is very, very similar, except we use it for categorical dependent variables. Uh, two class logistic re regression means there's two possible outcomes. Like in our bike buyers data set, yes and no, we would use two class. Two class. Multi-class is when we have more than two possible outcomes. So for country, there's more than two countries. So we're gonna need a multi-class logistic regression. All right, let's, well, that's fine. We can leave that right there. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, move these over here a bit so we can see them. Uh, trainer model. Yeah, let's go ahead and score our model and evaluate it too. Score model. Evaluate. There we go. Let's pull split data down to score model as usual so we can move the testing data down into it. All right, cool. Let's run that. Oh, I should have just done run selected so I didn't have to redo all this. Anyway, let me pause it. All right, that's finished. Let's take a look here. Uh, first of all, let's take a look at the train model. See what that came up with. Cool, okay, here's our, uh, this is for predicting each separate uh, possible outcome of country. Now, uh, these are the actual countries represented by my students. Um, however, by far most of them are from the USA and so, this is a highly skewed dependent variable. It's really not going to be a, a super accurate prediction since I don't have a lot of cases in, in each of these countries, but it, it'll serve the purpose here. So uh, columns seven, uh, eight, nine, these are my factors that have been combined from my principal components analysis. So here we go. I'm predicting USA, at least you can see the effect of each of those individually. Some of them definitely much bigger than others. What are these two? Work experience and column 10. Interesting. All right. Let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I should have probably taken out of the model state when interpreting country. Let me do that real fast. Um, if I'm predicting country, what I'm going to do is come back here and remove from this one state and i don't you know in fact let's get all of these out of the model and just keep country only to simplify things a little bit let me run that one more time anyway while that's running i want to add to this principal components analysis is only one method for extracting what those 11 factors are and uh the other thing there, there's others that i imagine microsoft will add maximum likelihood principal access factoring these are all other techniques, um, you know, least squares. Uh, these are other techniques for pulling out or reducing dimensions down to a smaller number of factors. But uh, PCA definitely is the most common one, which is why they started with that one. Something else I'd like to see them add is uh, the ability to see the factor scores for each of those 11 factors and see how, uh, what the actual eigenvalues, um, if you learn this stuff in more detail, uh, you can, if you care, you can find out what that is, but an eigenvalue tells you exactly uh, 
how different or how strongly a certain factor loaded or, or separated from the other factors. But anyway, um, I would expect some of these columns of those 11 to be stronger than others. Anyway, all right, this is done. Let's take a look. Visualize. All right. Oh, this is the evaluation results. So overall accuracy, almost 90%. That's a little bit, uh, there's a little bit of overfitting involved here because our data is highly skewed towards the US. Um, if I had an even number of cases in every country, I doubt it would be that high. So it's a little bit artificially inflated. But uh, let me go back to train model. Here we go. All right, so what we see now is the role of each of these columns in predicting uh, whether they'll basically belong to the US versus any other. So column nine, I bet these first five right here, if I had to guess, I bet these were five of those six cultural dimensions, like power, distance, uncertainty, avoidance, and so forth. And I bet these other down here were probably more like personality traits. The problem, though, is we don't know uh, if I had a more uh, if they if Microsoft would add that ability to their tool to see how each question loaded across each one of these uh, factors. I would be able to know what each of these factors represent, but I don't. I guess they figure for the purpose of uh, data analytics and prediction that we really don't care. Uh, we just want to get the best uh, and the most accurate prediction as possible. But anyway, that's a, an example of how to use PCA with survey data to reduce, we had something like 50 dimensions down to 11.